thank you. So my name is Torel Fjernström. I am from a, a company here in, in Finland called Tribe Flame. Our main claim to fame has been a, a cute little monkey called Benji, a game called Benji Bananas that we have reached some 100 something million downloads for. Uh, and recently we were acquired by Animoca Brands of, of Hong Kong. And we're not now a, a part of them. We're still the same eight-person team, which is basically now just one, one team in a, larger, in a larger company. Currently, we are developing a, a, a mid-core to core game. And um, I wanted to share some, some of the thinking about uh, how we approach game modes and, and planning for live ops when we are developing this game. So the, the core of it is this, that uh, you should be building cool games. But that's not enough. For every feature that you're building into this, you should be asking, what does this feature incentivize the player to do? Does it drive more sessions? Does it drive longer sessions? Does it get players to come back? Or does it get them to interact? Uh, does it strengthen the economy? So the cool features on its own, uh, that you build to, to get the acquisition in there, uh, to drive down your CPIs and get, up, uh, get the organics up. Uh, you need to think about the others to, to have, have the whole package. The game we are, are talking about is this. It's called Valhalla Wars. Uh, it is a... Uh, it's a military strategy game, and uh, actually I'll show you on the next slide what uh, the core of it. We are actually going into soft launch right now. In case you want it, just point your, your cameras at that QR code, and you'll most likely be able to download it uh, if you're in one of the like half a dozen markets uh, where, where we are, are going now, right now. We will be going global in... in uh, October on soft launch. The core mechanic of, of this, this is the cool stuff. This is the innovative new, new thing. Here we have, uh, you know, a, a battle game kind of Clash Royale like that you, you have enemies over here and you over here. The uniqueness here is that we are building a planning game rather than a reaction game. So you're getting your, your units down here and you get to give them orders. You walk along exactly this path, and this troll over here walks along exactly that, that path, supported by the cavalry over here that takes this path. So I'm setting up paths and plans for these guys, and then I'm saying, OK, I'm done, and they follow my orders without me interacting. Uh, after a while, I get a second wave of reinforcements, and I tell them what to do. It's sort of what, what a medieval general would really have done. I mean, you cannot, still cannot, and certainly couldn't then, micromanage units out on the field. No, you, you tell them that this is the plan, and then you go execute, and probably uh, things turn out funny because uh, the opponent didn't do what you, you expected them to do. Yeah, this is the cool core, core mechanic. Uh, now let's start looking at, at incentives. So the first thing was incentives to get people to come back. Uh, we have those, uh, what's the chests in Clash Royale, we have, have cool Viking ships in, in our g game. Of course, this is one of the main incentives for you to play different, uh, different modes. Uh, Clash Royale uses them for only their main game mode. Uh, we are building in several g different game modes, and they will each have their own slots tied to that game, uh, game mode. So if you want to have uh, several of these shipments, their timers running pa in parallel, you will be playing several different game modes. Of course, uh, the way we want to to balance this out is that the more time I spend 
in a day, the more sessions or more, more, more time in one day, the higher the, my progress speed, my rate of progress. So we'd want this curve to go up, but with diminishing returns. Diminishing returns so that uh, the they shouldn't open up too great a, a difference between someone who has a lot of time to grind and someone who has only a little time to grind. Remember, your best paying customers are likely to be the people with a career and a large paycheck. Some bankers and lawyers are going to be your whales. They don't have a lot of time. So if you incentivize too much uh, grinding here, you will have teenagers with lots of time on their hands beating out uh, the paying customers. You don't want that. So you want, uh, you want this curve to keep going up, but at a slower and slower pace. Now, in case you are wanting to try this out, uh, Right now, right now we still don't have have that. So, a warning: I'll, I'll be upfront about where your experience will suck for the first week or two in our game. This is what happens in our game: we have the one game mode that's currently in there, and then it will flatline. You will basically get nothing more for spending more time in the game uh, after you have filled the, those slots. Since since uh, the multiple game modes aren't in there yet. Clan modes. Uh, so what, do, what incentives do we have for collaborating with, uh, with other players? Uh, we're building in this HP system. Your main character, the leader of, of your, your Viking uh, clan is your Jarl. And that guy is up upgraded only with HP. And you get HP from donating cards to other players. Also, since we, we really like to be able to incentivize players with these uh, slots tied to different game modes, we are building in clan slots. So these are, are battles that you play together with your whole clan, and the whole clan gets a shipment. Now let's, let's go into the monetization part. How do we incentivize monetization? The first thing to realize is that in free-to-play, the whole store, what used to be outsourced to, to a physical store, is now inside the game. So uh, the previous talk was about the premium mindset. The premium mindset originally was that uh, let the physical store take care of all the dirty marketing stuff. Sales and promotions and two for the price of one and limited time offers and all of that. Now we have to take care of it. First rule of this is that uh, you do not want your store to look like Poland in 1989 or possibly the UK after a hard Brexit. Uh, what you want is Walmart today. So you need, you need to have lots of stuff on the shelves. Now, what's the shelf for, for us? Uh, there are different ways to progress in free-to-play games. You can progress with, with skill or luck or grinding or paying or, or help, help from friends. Uh, you want to make sure that grinding and paying are, are, are options. Uh, this leads to what we call the 10% rule, that really you want lots of stuff to upgrade 10% at a time, uh, so that you, you can get enough uh, depth into this, this content. Now, what we're building is a player versus player game, and this is how we visualize it, that you're basically climbing the ladder of progression here. And with, with luck and skill and grinding, you, you will be, most players will be climbing up this uh, with using these uh, tools. On the other side, someone with uh, less time on their hands, but more money on their hands, the paying customers, uh, the bankers and lawyers, they won't have time to grind, but they will be able to pay and have a, a, 
a jump up this ladder to keep pace with that one. So here's the banker keeping pace with his son, who is gr a grinder. Both are equally good ways to, to uh, progress in this. And then they are, are having a battle. Probably the banker needs to be slightly higher because the more grinding makes that guy more skilled. Uh, and we have a PvP match here. Uh, and that's sort of a, a combination of skill and level. But keep these ones very short. We cannot allow paying and cheating in here. People will very, very quickly be, be very, very pissed off at that this is, is a pay-to-win game. You can allow them to pay here, because that just means they will be matched up against tougher players over there. Inside the game, each match will still be fair. So I show, showed you the, the shelf. This is the shelf of a, a free-to-play game. On one axis, we have the number of upgradable items. And on the other ha axis, the number of upgrades I can have. So all of these cells together, that's your in-game economy. And you unlock these, these uh, cells by grinding or inviting friends or grinding some more or, or paying or watching rewarded video ads or, or, or such. This needs to be huge in a free-to-play game. Like we heard last speaker talk about, about buffing up the in-game economy to, uh, what was it, several times the size. If this isn't large enough, uh, you'll never uh, get the game to work. You should be able to play thousands of hours and spend thousands of, of dollars at the same time without running out of content here. So uh, the question is now, with back to incentivizing, do all the game modes we have built into the game, do they all incentivize me to unlock these, uh, these cells in, uh, that I showed you uh, in last, the last slide? For instance, in our game, uh, we are, are battling with units. Why should I collect more than the minimum I need for one battle? Do, what incentive do I have to do that? For instance, are there game modes where the units are exhausted? Uh, let's say I'm playing 10 games in a row. If one unit dies in a battle, I cannot use it anymore in the next battle. That means that I need to have a larger collection of, of upgraded units to still have something good to throw into the battle in game 8, 9, and 10. Uh, are there some challenges where, where I have to use certain units or I am not allowed to use certain units? Uh, this, of course, forces me into using some specific uh, collection of cards. Remember that PvP still has to make use of these upgrades. Uh, if you make a PvP mode, which is likely going to be the main mode, mode of, of games like this, where everything is always at the same level, you are taking away a large incentive for people to, to upgrade and, and uh, fill out these cells here. So, driving these upgrades, that's the upgrade screen of our game, everything has to tie into this same economy. Do not make any mini-games where uh, you're giving away stuff that is not dependent, how much you get is not dependent on the level or number of units that you have upgraded here. Keep your incentives always, always there. And last, in my last minute, a word about Battle Pass. Has anyone heard about a game called Fortnite? Does Fortnite mean that all of us can now just sell cosmetics and fair-to-play games. Uh, yeah, if you, what you make happen to become the number one game on the school playground, so that you get the real world recognition from your friends there that I have this skin, then go right ahead, sell only cosmetics. But no, the rest of us, who probably will not reach that position as the thing that teenagers talk about at school. The rest of us probably will still have to be, be selling progress in the games, and all of the stuff I've told you probably applies. 
Thank you. Questions? <laughs> Hi, thank you for a great talk. Uh, I would like to ask regarding game modes. Uh, aren't you afraid that uh, the, the more game modes you have, the more defocused the player are? I mean, that they don't have a single uh, place where all of them play the same game? Uh, true, uh, you can overdo it. Uh, though in, in uh, the... Uh, the limit seems to be higher than I would personally uh, anticipate. Uh, for instance, have you played Summoner's War or anything similar? These very successful games have like a dozen game modes and it's all overwhelming to me, but they appear to be doing really nicely. Uh, what a problem, of course, if you split into too many different buckets, a player versus player game, you will get the problem of, of there's not enough matches. On the other hand, um, for live ops to keep stuff interesting and fresh, it's good that, that you, you have uh, different versions of the same core open to people to keep it, to keep it fresh, as I said. Uh, there's also different, uh, different uh, motivations for players. We want one version that is very, very quick to play that you know I can progress in this mode if I only have 15 seconds. We're literally looking at such a short game. And then there's the very involved game for the long term, the, what drives uh, the hobbyist who, who's really committed to this game, who wants to play a, a long, really strategic game where they are coordinating a fight with their, their allies and sending like hundreds of units into the same battle. So, we can't get all of these into the same, uh, same uh, uh, mode, so we have to have a few. And frankly, that's one of the reasons that LiveOps uh, works, is that uh, you don't have to put all of them active at the same time. Uh, some of them go up this week and are down next week, and then this other mo mode is up next week. Um, we are trying to build this game really around uh, a very customizable core that we can bring uh, down to very, very short games and up to very, very long and complex games with keeping the same UI, keeping the same core. One more question here. Thanks. Can you give us an example of the additional game modes in the core game? Because we, the, you, you've seen the, you showed us the core game on just one slide, versus yep. one versus one. Is, can you tell us more? Uh, yes. Uh, the few that, that will certainly go in there is, in one game mode, you are going to have several waves of, of uh, reinforcements coming in. In another game mode, a quick play, you have just one. So you, you plan once, and you pl press battle and then it's all hands off until it, the game tells you if you won or lost. So the second game mode is very, very short, very, very casual. While the first, where there comes several waves, I get to react and counter your moves, you counter mine, I counter yours. And a third game mode is our alliance play. Since this is planning based, we can give you a one hour time frame to plan, when I draw my orders on the screen and you're my ally, you get to see what I drew and you get to sort of uh, help out me or, or communicate to me, can, can you support me over here? And then once the one hour is up, then our orders have to be in and uh, our opponents have done the same. So this is a very long and strate strategic mode. So those are a few of the ones we are planning. Currently only one is in, in there actually.